Hey there, this is Angie at Chicken Scratch, and today I'm going to share with you how to make this small tote. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so here's some of the supplies we're going to be using today to make this small tote. Um, pins, clips, love these clips, um, a label, that's my Chicken Scratch label, erasable marker, scissors, some rulers. When you watch the video, these will be explained. I use a different rotary cutter for my fusible fleece. So I use my Fiskars for, for the fusible fleece, and then I use this trimmer or rotary cutter to cut my fabric. You're also gonna want an iron, an ironing board, matching thread. Now let me show you the fusible fleece and the interfacing. This is the exact one that I use for the front of the bag. So the front fabric, the back fabric, we call that the outside. Uh, this is what I use, 987F uh, Pellon. And then for the liner, I use also Pellon, fusible interfacing, I just call it interfacing. And it is PLF 36. So you'll see both of these in the video. And then these are different supplies but it makes the same thing so your outside fabric you're going to need two pieces that measure 11 by 8 your lining is going to be 11 by 8 your two pieces of fusible fleece 11 by 8 and two pieces of the interfacing 11 by 8 your handles are made i can tell i didn't trim this <laughs> it's supposed to be nine by three and then your Fusible fleece is going to be nine by one, and then the label. So now we're ready to make the tote. Okay, so here's all of our pieces, and we're going to move everything aside, and we're going to start with our front or outside fabric, okay? So this is going to be two pieces, 11 by 8. The fusible fleece is the same. So I'm going to place this on that tacky side. I call it the scratchy side. And then this one also. Okay, so we're going to press those. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the lining fabric. So this is the interface and this is really thin. You could skip this if you want. I just wanted the basket or the tote to be a little sturdier. Again, make sure it's that sticky side. And we'll reposition these when we get the ironing board. Make sure that they're on there straight. Okay, so now we're ready to press those. Okay, so now we're gonna press the fusible fleece to the outside fabric. One tip I did wanna tell you is turn off your steam when you're using your when you're pressing the fusible fleece. Now we're ready for the lining fabric. Okay, so now we've pressed our fusible fleece onto the outside fabric and the lining fabric and we're going to place these right sides together and we're going to pin or clip. Um, I have some clips here, I have some pins, so whatever you prefer. So there's that one. Same thing on this one, right sides together. Now this is the lining fabric and so I'm going to place a pin in the middle telling me to leave an opening from about here to here, okay? So now we're going to the sewing machine. We're going to start with the outside fabric, the front and the back, 
and we're just going to stitch on the bottom. I'm lining it up to the edge of my foot. So this is a Bernina and I'm using one foot number one and I'm just lining up the edge with the edge of the foot. That That's what I use a lot instead of saying a quarter inch or a half inch. Now we're going to take the lining fabric and do the same thing. So I'm leaving an opening. Okay, so we've done the bottom, and at this point we can go ahead and do the sides. You don't want to do that on the front fabric because we're going to put our label on it. But on the lining fabric, you can go ahead and stitch on the left and the right side. Okay, so now we're ready to add our labels. You're going to open up your outside fabric and take your label, fold it in half, and then we're cutting out um, a three inch bottom, which means we're gonna be cutting out a half in, uh, one and a half inches over here, one and a half over here. So you wanna make sure that you bring your label up far enough that you're not gonna actually cut it. And that should be pretty good. Bring it up just a little bit more. And I'm gonna pin it. So now we're taking this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew on the left and the right. Okay, so before we go any further, let's open this up and make sure that we caught the label in the seam. So I took my pen out and the label looks good. If you missed it, take it back to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're ready to cut out the bottom corners. And what I'm gonna use is a one and a half inch square. So this is just a piece of cardstock and I've cut it to measure one and a half inches. You can use your ruler, you can use your rotary cutter. There's so many ways that you can do this, but because I mass produce these um, totes, baskets, I'm, I'm gonna use whatever's the easiest or the quickest. So this is really how I use it. And I typically will take a clip, I'll clip it, and then I will take a an erasable marker and trace around and you want to make sure that this is that it starts on your seam line here okay so it's going to start on the seam not over here on the edge of your fabric and then now I'm going to do the same thing on this side so I'm just going to clip it on so that it stays in its spot and then And I'm gonna do that on the lining fabric as well. Okay, so we're ready to cut the corners out. So I'm just gonna take my really sharp scissors. I got these on Amazon. I'll make sure the link is uh, on my blog. And now this corner. Now this one. Okay, 
Okay, so open this up. And then you're going to fold either to the left or to the right. So make sure that this one, that they go in opposite directions, okay? And then I'm gonna pin it. You could press those open, but like I said, I've made so many different baskets and totes that as long as you just alternate like that, it's gonna be fine. The bags and totes are pretty forgiving. Okay, there's that one. And now this one, same thing, just make sure that the front either goes to the left and the back goes to the right or vice versa. <laughs> I said the opposite of what I did. Okay, so we're taking both of these to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch straight across. So straight across. Same thing, I'm just gonna line this up to the edge of the foot. Okay, I want you to notice this. See how this side goes back to the right, and then over here it goes to the left. So when I pinned it, I pinned it incorrectly. I want both sides going in the same direction. So I'm just gonna open this back up and just switch it around, <laughs> okay? Let's see, let me make sure I'm doing that right, yep. Okay, so we are ready for the handles. So we're gonna leave the lining fabric just like this, and we're gonna take the outside fabric, and we're gonna turn it right sides out. Now, we're gonna set this aside for a minute because we need to actually prepare the handles. Okay, so here's my fabric three by nine, and then the fusible fleece, which is one by nine. And what I'm gonna do is fold it in half and then press it. And then we're gonna fold down the edges on both sides. Okay, so let me get the ironing board. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna fold it in half, just like that. Okay, so now you're gonna open it up and you're gonna fold down about a quarter inch on each side. Okay, then you're gonna fold these over like that. Okay, so now you wanna make sure it looks good. You wanna make sure you like it before you proceed because you can't take it back after you add the fusible fleece, okay? So we're gonna do the exact same thing to this one. 
and then we will add the fusible fleece. So you're just gonna fold it down Okay, now we're going to add this right inside there, just like that, and then fold, and then fold, and make sure it looks good. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to press. Okay, so now we're ready to go and stitch all the way down on both sides, but I actually like to pin it because the handles are the one um, part of this tote that I struggle with the most. Um, not all of my handles are <laughs> the best, so I'm gonna try to make sure that they stay pretty. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've ever made handles, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to line up the inside of my foot. So normally I sew, I line up my fabric to the edge, the outside edge of my fabric. For the handles, I'm gonna line it up to the inside edge. Now the other side. Okay, our handles are done and we are ready to attach them. So here is the front of our bag and this measures approximately 10 inches across, okay? So this is how I add the handles. There are lots of ways that you can do it, but this is how I do it, okay? So I'm placing my ruler on here. This is a 10 inch ruler and I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark the five inch. That's the halfway point, okay? Then I'm gonna take a ruler that has added a quarter inch, okay? So that means technically I'm going to go over uh, one and a quarter inches on the left and on the right to add my handle. And because this ruler has this extra quarter inch, it makes it perfect to use. So I'm lining the one up with my pen, and then I'm placing another pen where I want my handle to begin. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side, okay? So line up the one with, with that pen that's at the five inch mark, and then place your pen here, okay? Now what we're gonna do is add our handle beginning where that pen is, okay? So right there is where I'm gonna add it. And I'm gonna take a clip and just hold it there for a second and make sure that everything looks good before I use a pen. So again, I'm lining this up with the edge of the pen. And don't take the pins out yet because we're gonna use them on the other side as well so that we don't have to re-measure. Just be careful that you don't poke yourself, okay? So again, and you know what? It might make it easier for you to, um, you know what, I need to snip these threads. Um, it might make it easier for you to take the pins out, but I like leaving them in. 
Okay, there's that one. Make sure you get your handle the way you want it. Actually, mine is not. <laughs> to the edge of the pen. And then here. I hope that this is not confused, y'all. Okay, so now they're where I want them. I can take my pins out. But then I need to pin the handles on because you can't sew like that. And they're all together. So I'm going to just open this up, leave the back one in place, and then pin this one. Same thing. And then now the back side. I probably make this harder for myself, but I am kind of self-taught, you know? Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew. And I'm gonna use the inside of my foot again. <laughs> Okay, now that our handles have been sewn on, we're ready for the next step. This is our lining fabric and it's right sides in. We're gonna take our outside fabric and place it inside the liner, okay? So that's how it looks. You wanna line up your seams and this one is going to the left, so the inside is gonna go to the right. And then I'm going to pin it. And then I'm going to go all the way over to the other seam and go ahead and line that up and pin it. And then I'll come in the middle here and, and finish it off. Probably two more pins. It's got that handle in there, so it makes it a, a little bit bulkier. And then the same thing over here. You can use your clips if you want. Okay, we're headed over to the sewing machine. Okay, so for this one, you might wanna know that instead of using the edge of my foot or the inside of my foot, I'm actually gonna go straight down the middle. <laughs> and that's so that this top part isn't so bulky. But whatever seam you want to use, it will be fine. And I really like to start more over on the side of the bag. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we've just stitched across the whole the whole bag. Um, and now what we wanna do is, here's the opening that we left in the lining fabric, and we're gonna push the entire basket through that opening, and then we're gonna sew that closed. Okay, so I'm gonna press out the corners just with my finger. Okay, so we're gonna close this piece. We're gonna close the, the opening on the inside, but make sure you push out your corners before you, before you do that. Okay, there we go. 
So, okay, so just, I'm gonna pin it and then we're gonna sew it. Just like that, okay? For this piece, I'm also going to sew using the inside of my foot. So that's where I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric is on that inside piece. Okay, now let's snip those extra threads. We just closed the lining fabric. And now what we're gonna do is push this inside, just like that. Okay, so now, if your lining fabric is peeking through on the front, just kind of roll it a little bit with your fingers, and that usually helps, helps it, okay? So we're just pinning across the whole top and then we're gonna go and stitch across the top. The sides are a little bit bulkier because I did not open my seam. So remember when I said you can if you want to, but you don't have to. So. Some of you may have to use a walking foot. I don't on my um, on my Bernina, but on some of my other machines, I might have to use a walking foot. Okay, so for the top of the bag, I like to use the edge of my foot, okay? Okay, so she's finished. Isn't it so cute? I just love it. Um, so trim all your extra threads and, and let me show you the first one that I made. This is the one that everyone voted on. Okay, so that wraps up the small tote. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and head over to my blog and print your free PDF that has all the measurements. Have a great day. Bye.